Last year, a former data consultant at Cambridge Analytica blew the whistle on his firm for illegally harvesting and exploiting the information of millions of Facebook users. In his new book, Christopher Wiley reveals the details of the scandal, and he also addresses the power social media companies have in manipulating its users. He sat down with CBS News investigative reporter Graham Cates and CNET senior producer Dan Patterson to expose exactly how much information is unknowingly harvested on social media. There was one I think particularly disturbing scene that played out in your book where you described uh, looking through the internet activity, the real-time internet activity of individual people in Trinidad and in the background your boss Alexander Nix is laughing, kind of making fun of people as they're literally using the internet at that moment. And my question is, do you think that people realize that companies are capable of that level of surveillance? Uh, no. I, I, you know, I, people aren't, I, I think people may be sort of theoretically aware that like somebody can do something, but you know, when you look at, um, you know, a lot of some of the past relevations, you know, like Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning and all that, a lot of people kind of went, well, like if I'm collateral collection or whatever, I'm not the target, somebody else is the target. Um, what's different with Cambridge Analytica um, and more broadly with social media is that like you are the target. Right? Like y y people want to harvest your information um, in a, as granular a way as possible in order to like create a picture, a complete picture of who you are, um, ultimately to either sell you things or make you believe things, whatever. Um, you know, I in the book I talk about that as an example, just to really hit home. Like, like this looks like something. It's like literally people are can look at this. You know, people can look at what you're what you're browsing um, and. Uh, you know, I, I think that that's probably something that we collectively should be looking at as like, you know, how should we prevent this from happening? Right after the 2016 election, Facebook initially denied that propaganda or conspiracy theories had proliferated on the platform. Then after you blew the whistle, Facebook said, hey, look, we've taken a number of steps to make the platform more secure. We are several years later. In your assessment, is Facebook more or less secure than it was in 2016? Well, I would hope that it's more secure. Um, I think there's a more fundamental question, which is why are we entrusting a private company with the role of being a referee of speech in political discourse and also you know, the protector of the security of you know, a really major part of elections and our democratic process? Um, you know, Facebook has a, a history of, you know, hiding and obfuscating and delaying and not being upfront with people about the problems that it knew about and perhaps still knows about, you know, on its platform. And my concern is that, you know, if we just, if we just hope and trust that Mark Zuckerberg is going to do the right thing, you know, we're putting all of our eggs in one basket. and. You know, even if a company like Cambridge Analytica no longer exists, you know, many of the same people work at the Trump campaign, and the capabilities didn't disappear, right? And so my concern, and this is something that I talk about later in the book, is that, you know, even if CA has gone away, you know, what happens if China becomes the next Cambridge Analytica? What happens if North Korea or Iran becomes the next Cambridge Analytica? That, you know, this is like a really serious thing, and I, I, I just you know, I do not believe that letting this responsibility be solely managed by a private company that has a history of hiding and obfuscating what's happening on this platform is a good idea. There are a lot of skeptics out there who disbelieve that Facebook could really be responsible for influencing so many people. Yeah. So, you know, if you uh, imagine you're on a blind date for a second and you know, let, let's say you go and you sit down with somebody and you're chatting with that person and, you know, they happen to like, like the same music that you like. They watch the same TV shows that you watch. You know, they know some of the same people. They hang out in the same places. They seem like perfect for you, right? And, and the reason for that is because they've spent two years stalking you. You know, looking at your photos, reading your text messages, talking to your friends, following you at work. And, you know, in that moment, you are vulnerable to being manipulated because there is an imbalance in information. You don't, you can't properly assess, 
you know, the meaning and context of the things that you're being told because you don't know the underlying motivation or the underlying information that's powering that, right? And so Facebook is like a scaled version of that stalker. Um, information is really powerful. And you know, if, if Facebook wasn't an effective tool for getting people to do things, whether it's to buy things or vote or whatever, you know, it wouldn't be a multi-billion dollar company. Um, I have seen personally how powerful you know, ad targeting can be on that platform and, and more broadly what you're able to do when you can capture uh, you know, people on that platform and cultivate a manipulative relationship with them. Um, so you know, if people are skeptical, that's fine, they're entitled to be. But you know, surely if it's something as important as our democracy, the precautionary principle should you know, reign true, I think. And that even if you're a skeptic, the potential consequences for the erosion of our democracy is so serious that nonetheless we should take seriously some of the concerns that people have. CBS News investigative reporter Graham Cates joins me now. Boy, it's just fascinating to hear him talk and rehash all this. But I, I want to ask you, what happened to those members who work for Cambridge Analytica? They did away with that company. Where are they now? Did he talk about that? A lot of them are doing very similar work. They're doing similar work for campaigns here in the U.S. We know of a few already working for the Trump campaign. And they're working around the world. And, and that's what he was alluding to. He was saying, what if a nation state is able to do the kinds of things that Cambridge Analytica did? And I, I think it's fair to assume, I mean, if a company could do it. And it was a small company. It had a budget of like $20 million at mm -hmm. first. Of course, mm -hmm. China, the U.S., Russia, North Korea could figure out how to access those same channels to learn about people. People. And that's what he's really worried about. And I should say as a side note, we are currently trying to figure out where all of the Cambridge Analytica employees um, ended up because we want to know, did they take the data, the original, that amazing, powerful data that really can stand the test of time, and did they bring it with them to other places to use it in the same way? Mm. You know, famously, um, Wiley was banned from all Facebook platforms after coming forward. Does he still believe that people should delete Facebook for security reasons? We actually talked about that a little bit. And he said, uh, he said it's, it shouldn't be on you to do that. This is a nice tool. It's, it's cool to be able to share your photos and communicate with people. It should be on Facebook to make you feel comfortable with Facebook. Why should you have to pay the price for the fact that um, other people are, are leveraging your information? You asked him if he had a message for Facebook. What did he tell you? He said, call me. He call wants me? to communicate with Facebook. He's still banned. He's lumped in with the Cambridge Analytica people who weren't the whistleblowers, right? And he's saying, I want to communicate with you. I'm a critic, but I think that we have a good conversation to have here. I don't get that. I mean, he's deleted Facebook, right? He blew the whistle on this, but he still wants to... Well, he didn't delete Facebook. They banned him. I mean, they, sorry, they banned him, right? And they removed him, but he's, he's saying, call me? Yeah, I think he, he got an inside look at the vulnerabilities that Facebook has. Mm. And he's saying, instead of, instead of just cutting me off and, and never communicating with me, why don't we talk about the problems that I saw mm. that apparently people around the world think are major issues too. Do you think Facebook calls him? No, I, I spoke with a representative of Facebook this morning um, and uh, they weren't they're not thrilled with Christopher Wiley's message. Mm. All right, we'll leave it at that. And great interview, well done. And uh, we can read more and see more on CBS News.